So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the, like, come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell you there, champs. Now the Asus ZenBook 14, in this case, the UX431, is an elegant, sleek, stylish ultrabook from Asus. And just having a look at it, look how gorgeous it is. And I've said it once and I'll say it again. The finishing Asus do with their metal is unparalleled. They certainly have the best finishing on their metal surfaces. Now, there are so many 13, 14 inch ultrabooks. This one happens to be a 14 inch, but there are so many and they're so similar. This one stands out for being something, you know, someone with taste, the fashionista would like. This beautiful utopia blue, even on the keyboard, you get, you know, gold backlighting on the individual keys. Very stylish, very elegant, very sleek, beautiful, and the build quality is top notch too. Nice metal build, very affordable too. Like I've seen them here in Australia for 1200. Starting at 1200, that's the i5 model. You can of course go up into the thousands or a couple of thousand if you get the i7 MX150 and the bigger storage options. Of course, this one here comes with the i5 8265U 15 watt quad core processor, 8 gigs RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. Now the SSD can be SATA or NVMe and it actually has two lanes so it says in the spec so don't go and buy one of those fast 3000 megabytes per second read and writes because you're not going to get the most out of it in this package you'll get about 1800 is the max and this one has about 1800 read and about 500 write you can of course get up to 16 gigabytes LPDDR3 soldered in of course the only thing you can upgrade is the M.2 and the Wi-Fi card so note that so it is indeed a 14 inch ultrabook and you have the options of full HD displays, either matte or glossy. The one I have is the matte version and indeed it does have a display that's pretty much 100% sRGB and it's a really good display. There is no touch version of this but good viewing angles, nice contrast, the colours are right and it's 14 inches so you get a bit of extra real estate there so no complaints on the display and this is actually as I said before you can pick it up for 1200 Australian so yeah. so I can only imagine it will be under a thousand US for you know like a lower configuration model and it looks much more expensive than that. It looks Looks like a really high-end ultrabook and being a 14 inch ultrabook it's still light so 1.39 kilos or three pounds so yeah it's bang on in terms of weight for a 14 inch ultrabook on the right hand side you have a full size sd card slot i can't tell you how happy that makes me that is awesome you have a combination audio jack and you have usb 2.0 type a on the left hand side you have a dc jack HDMI, USB 3.1 Type-A and a USB 3.1 Type-C. Now there's no Thunderbolt 3. I guess that's fine at this sort of price point and you won't be charging via the USB-C either. You have to use the DC in. The sound is really good actually. You can see the speakers on top. Very nice, stylish, good sound, crystal clear. I mean, it lacks a little bit of oomph. I mean, it is an ultra book. It doesn't have a whole lot of grunt, but the clarity of it is just crystal clear and it does give you a surround effect so this will be great for watching netflix or something like that keyboard and trackpad are awesome 1.4 millimeters of travel that beautiful orange backlight individually on the keys it is an excellent keyboard i have no complaints whatsoever the trackpad is a little bit small but it works well windows precision just as work well and it does have the fingerprint reader on the trackpad itself which you would think would get in the way but it actually doesn't you get a 65 watt power supply a 47 watt hour batteries so it is good for easily eight hours it would have been nice to see a little bit bigger battery but once you get around the eight hour mark you know i consider that all day battery life now when it comes to performance it performs very much like every other ultra book there there's nothing remarkable about it and there's nothing bad about it the thermals are quite good you're only going to hear the fan under really high load you won't hear it just web surfing and stuff like that you do have the option of a graphics card so you have the option of the mx150 if you're going to do video editing or gaming get that if you don't have the one with the mx150 you're only going to be playing casual games triple a titles no 
You can play AAA titles with the MX150. I've done lots of videos on these sort of components, the Ultrabook components and the MX150. Once you peg that CPU, it'll sit around 2.2, 2.3 gigahertz. And the fan noise isn't that loud and it doesn't get that hot, but it does have that trademark, you know, Ultrabook sort of high-pitched fan when it does kick in. So overall, in a crowded market of Ultrabooks, this does stand out for its styling, its competitive price point, its build quality, its finish. There's not a lot wrong with this. In fact, the lack of Thunderbolt 3 maybe, and I'd like to see maybe some more display options. And if you're a spec head, having, you know, two times slot instead of a four times slot in the M.2 slot, a tech head won't like that. But for the normal average consumer, this is a perfect price point, a perfect product, beautiful. The battery life's good enough and it's a quality product. So yeah, well done Azus on this. If you have any questions on it, let me know down there in the comments. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Honestly, you guys are champs and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.